Well, since our last video made a little bit of progress, I got the body mocked up in place while I was waiting for some parts to show up. So body's just held in place by some Clicos right now. Uh, this is the front body section. Uh, what we're gonna do in this video is mock up the rear axle and the motor plate, or maybe I'll get that far, but at least the rear axle. So cut the frame and in order to strengthen that, I'll show you the part I built for that. So this piece here, it's a one and a quarter inch uh, piece of one, one and a quarter by one and a quarter steel that I cut down, clearanced it, and um, put it together so that this is going to strengthen. So this is through bolted through here with some bolts so that that way this weakness that is developed here because with the, with the differential you have to drop the axle in because there's going to be a differential mounts in here as well. Uh, with a solid axle, you wouldn't have to cut this. You would just mount this straight in here, and you wouldn't need this part. So I just, you know, design your own. This is what I came up with. Strengthen it a little bit by adding a little piece of gusset right there. And that'll bolt through there once everything's installed. It's clearance enough for the bearing. So that's that. So parts came in yesterday. So this is exciting. I got a bunch of parts to put together. I got the motor plate. Got an 8-inch disc for the brakes. 60-tooth sprocket. 35 pitch, got my hydraulic brake parts. These are for Vintage Cart Co. These are leftovers from ones they no longer used on their carts. So if you want to set up a hydraulic brakes that are good quality brakes, that's a great place to get them. And this is my differential. So if you're going with a solid axle, a lot of the stuff's not going to apply in this video. This is the spacer that Vintage Cart Co. builds to mount mounts on this side for your sprocket your sprocket mounts onto the, into these four bolts. So that's their kind of their own mount system. So actually, I'm sorry. This I guess is mouse. Well, what is that? I guess it's this. Yeah. You know. Anyway, that's how it goes together. Um, I'll put it together in the video here, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So these are my springs. Uh, Vintage Carco had some leftover buggy springs. These are from Ingalls Coach Spring Shop. Um, you can see Ingalls is not exactly. I mean, see they're not quite perfectly level with each other. It's maybe a quarter inch or less than a quarter inch different, but that's not going to matter. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so the differential from Peerless comes with these through bolts. So we're gonna take these out and use the vintage Carco supplied bolts. These, these are what we normally would just hold your sprocket on, but because we're using a sprocket disc brace combo in this spacer, brings a different set of bolts because it's a little longer. Now this is a threaded housing. So these bolts are threaded into here. And they come to you, they're really tight. I had to put it in the vise to kind of knock this thing loose. So anyway, so we'll get these out of here and replace them with the longer grade eight bolts that Vintage Carco gives you with their spacer kit. And I'm not sure exactly what the current cost of that is. I got mine picked up yesterday and I didn't even see the receipt. I just paid Jack for kind of the bulk of all the parts. Um, but I think it's on their website. It comes with all the these longer grade eight bolts and the grade eight nylock bolts, or nuts rather. Um, so you're not gonna use these bolts if you're the peerless diff. A um, little too short. And they're not grade eight, right? I don't think they are. Maybe those are grade eight. This is black instead of uh, so anodized, whatever this coating is that's on these grade eights. The gold kind of color. Jack says when you go to install your new ones, and when you talk to Jack, he, he can tell you this. If you talk to him, I'm not sure if they tell you via email kind of what to expect, but um, when you bolt these in, you kind of bottom out the threads. So the last couple threads, unless you want to go ahead and cut some new threads onto here, I guess the last couple threads kind of, you're not depending on the threads in here to hold this together. The threads in here are not held, holding it together. Your new bolt nuts are holding the whole thing together. So if you're, if you're, as you're going in, I guess as you're bolting it in, it's, it's going to feel like it's stripping. That's because it is uh, stripping out the old threads inside this housing. The first couple threads. I mean, there's, there's that much threads. There's an inch of threads in there. So not a, not a critical thing, but it's going to make it work just fine. And as this goes in, the, the housing starts to come apart a little bit. You want to kind of hang on to it. It's got springs in here. And it 
this one's kind of already pulling apart. As I pull it, I'm just going to hold it together with my hand and unthread this when I start thinking it. Sorry. There's a little tension in there, and as I'm undoing it, it's really hard to do it by hand. And, uh, like every half a turn, it doesn't want to... The ratchet doesn't want to actually ratchet back and forth. It's got less tension. Pulling it out by hand is kind of a booger. I'm gonna pause it for a minute. Okay, so since Jack's advice was to cut a few threads, I decided this is the kind of the one of the, the goldish one is the one, the original thread. Why is that not focused? Closer, closer, anyway. Um, so I cut a few threads onto the new bolt or the old bolt, the one that they provided. So it's got a few extra threads on it. It's got my Craftsman uh, tap and die set. So this is a, 5 16 by 18, sorry, you can't see my face. <laughs> 5 16 by 18 pitch um, thread. So anyway, I cut the first bolt cut. I'll cut the rest of them now. Okay, so I got the Vintage Carco Supplied uh, grade eight bolts bolted through the disc brake side. So these threaded in here nicely. A uh, little pro tip, and I didn't do this, and it almost was a disaster. Put a piece of tape around this thing. Uh, these two sides are going to want to pop apart and the gear inside is going to want to pop out. Um, I caught mine before it com <laughs> completely came apart. It almost had a minor disaster, but everything seems to still spin until either the gears or planetary gears, whatever's in there, uh, still work. So, at any rate, so the bolts are in. They're snug. They're not completely tightened down, but they're snug. So this spacer, and I've just got the bolts on there for the sprocket, but the spacer just slides on here right on top of the new bolts that just fits right in there and then grade 8 nuts and lock nuts or nylock nuts go in there so I'll do that next so they got the bolts through here the nuts are tightened on the inside of this adapter so the next thing is to go ahead and put the sprocket on so let's do that now I'm just going to set the disc brake here put the sprocket so it sits 60 tooth on the outside so if you ever need to see it you can see it Line up the little holes on there. Wash the nuts. I don't think I need to use any Loctite on this. It doesn't seem like this is going to be something that's going to take a I guess it might vibrate a little bit, but uh, being aluminum, actually, I should probably use some. You know, I'm going to take a stop here and I'm going to put some. Uh, NTC's on there. So let me do that real quick. Let me pause this real quick here. All right, so we're gonna put some NTC's on the bolts. Just, you know, aluminum, when you're dealing with aluminum and metal, uh, sometimes things happen and the stuff will never come out again. Uh, so put a little NTC's on here. Not 100% sure it's required, but it's good practice, might as well. If you have an opportunity to do it right, do it right the first time instead of galling the threads and destroying things. Take a lot of anti-seeds, just enough to so your bolts don't freeze up in there later on. You can never take this thing apart if you need to for any reason. If you ever want to change your sprocket or whatever, it makes it a lot harder if they're frozen in there because uh, aluminum and metal react sometimes, and especially if you're in a climate where you got a lot of moisture. Um, there's some corrosion that happens in there, and I learned that from experience on my Toyota Prius. We had to replace the bearings on that. And, yeah, that thing was completely frozen uh, inside the uh, steering knuckle. And Toyota assembled it with a little bit of grease or something. It would have been a lot easier to replace. So these bolts go in here. It's the wrong size, I guess it's a different size bolt. Yeah, so 9 16 instead of half inch. All right, we got that. The reason I'm holding the thing up like this, if you lay it on the bench, it wants to roll off the bench. And that's not cool.
Okay, so I got the sprocket and the disc brake installed. So that's what it looks like on the assembly. Assembly. A little tough to tighten this bolts here because it's, it's rolling around. So once I get it on the car and have the chain on, we'll torque those down a little bit. There's really not a torque spec. I guess just go tight until they're snug. So that's the differential. So the next thing you do is get it in the cart. Okay, so we're ready to put the axle in the cart. Before I did that, I had to mock it up with the brackets. I had to install some rods underneath. I had actually added an extension below the frame rail uh, to, to give it some depth so that it has somewhere for this thing to attach. I did this one other time and I used some square tubing. This time I had some really stout round tubes, so I thought, well, why not? It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it's something that's strong and stiff and it's not going to flex. Uh, the purpose for these inside bearings is that because there's basically two axles attached at the center, uh, if you don't have those inner ones, you can get some flex and it'll, it'll cause a peerless axle to fail. So um, I'm going to go and show you what that looks like installed. Okay, so the differential is installed. Got the bolts tightened. Um, set screws are snug. These aren't over tightened too much right now. When you do your final assembly, you want to use Loctite on all of these. There's one, two, three, four, eight of them. And you're gonna put locking collars here, 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 and here. Reason for that is you don't want this assembly sliding around if any of these loosen up. It takes a tremendous amount of vibration. Um, one trick you're gonna to wanna to do when you do this is kind of progressively go around. I tighten the inside ones first. Uh, you wanna make sure this thing spins freely. Um, if it doesn't just spin freely about like that, then it's, something's not out of, a little out of alignment. So, um, so we're gonna call that the end of this video. Uh, oh, one other thing I almost forgot. So you're going to measure from your outside of your axle tip to your axle bearing. Make sure they're even on both sides. Uh, I, mark, I mark the center. Shadows on the thing there. So mark the center on the frame to center of the pumpkin. Uh, hopefully that'll help you index it. Make sure you get everything lined up. So the next phase will be getting a motor mount in here and uh, getting this thing on its wheels. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you like the videos. We'll have more to come.